What's up, guys? Marshall Breakdowns here. Tonight, we're going to be going over what happened in the main event of UFC 264. What a night. With Conor McGregor breaking his ankle in the fight to end with a TKO by Dr. Stoppage. So, let's go over what happened. Conor opens the fight extremely kick-heavy, similar to his first fight, landing some nice back kicks, throwing high kicks, and mixing in his kicking with his boxing. For the first minute or so, it doesn't look like Dustin had an answer, but at one point we see Connor hit Dustin with a low kick and Dustin points at him. In the post-fight interview, Dustin said he feels this is what broke Connor's leg. However, looking at the kick, it's really hard to tell. The kick is damn close to the knee. If it didn't hit the knee, it would have just caught the tendon above it. It doesn't look like Dustin checks the kick, but even without checking the kick, if you hit that knee bone, it's a damn good way to have an Anderson Silva type at night. And the one thing I noticed, though, looking at this kick, is that Connor appears to land with his instep, not the shin. If he landed with the instep on the knee, you'd expect a broken foot, not a broken tibia bone. Now, I'm no doctor, but I've studied enough on the subject to know that the way stress fractures work is that if your bone isn't calcified enough, you can end up with micro fractures that weaken the structure of the leg. This is why you'll sometimes see basketball players jump for shots and land, breaking their tibia on impact from landing. It's also possible that Connor had practiced kicks so much in the buildup that he accumulated stress fractures on the tibia. The kick heavy approach to the fight could have made that worse and the weight transfer from that final left hand may just have been the straw that broke the camel's back. For the most part, it looked like Connor outlanded Dustin on the feet, but Dustin did land two solid connections on the feet, one of which was that duck and left hand that I mentioned in the last video. Hmm? Told you to keep an eye out for that. Now, honestly, I think at this point, Connor was already feeling the effects of his leg. We've never seen Connor give up a takedown and jump guillotine like that. Despite him giving up the takedown, Dustin was in danger for a minute from the guillotine. He made great use of the cage, however, walking up on the wall to alleviate some of the pressure. And then, although Connor did manage to slide his arm in deeper, which would have covered both arteries, Dustin has control of his far hand, preventing him from reinforcing the lock. Dustin starts to put on some solid ground and pound before Connor gets back to his feet. They both simultaneously throw a cross while slipping the others, but as Connor puts his weight on his back foot, the leg snaps. Man, it sucks to see a fight in like this. Despite any of our biases, who we wanted to win, etc., it's it's hard, it's horrible seeing someone take an injury like this who's done so much for the sport and in a fight with this was such a gruesome injury. I hope Connor has a fast recovery and gets back on his feet so we can see him in the octagon again. He's super entertaining. And Poirier showed a nice takedown with some great ground and pound work. I'm sure him versus Oliveira is going to be a hell of a fight. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that as well. Wow, guys, hell of a night. I got to get my ass in bed. But if you want to see more breakdowns on takedown technique for both a wrestling, BJJ, and MMA context, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe and check out my other videos. I've got tons of video breakdowns going over techniques from fighters like Khabib, Kamzap Chemaev, Daniel Cormier, and so much more. So be sure to check those out. As always, guys, though, thanks for watching. Good luck training.